Hello, everybody. Welcome to Thursday. How are you guys doing? Let's talk a little bit today about this Libra eclipse that's happening this weekend, October 14th. It is a new moon. It is the annular solar eclipse. And at new moons, as you know, if you watch my channel for any length of time, new moons are about manifesting new beginnings. There are going is going to be, because it's Libra, major shifts in relationships, major sudden change. Eclipse season is about, it's almost like a portal leading to new beginnings, okay? Um, it's bookended by the full moon in Taurus that's happening at the end of this month. But what I want to draw your attention to today is the new moon in Libra is conjunct the south node. And if you have watched my channel for any length of time, I talk about the North Node and South Node. There are nodes of the moon, and they point to our karmic mission and path in this life. And when something is activating, like an eclipse, something is activating the South Node. South Node is about past life karma. So as a collective, we are going to have past life karma activated the energy of surrender is a big one, even though it's a new moon. The energy of surrender so that Libra can do its job of balancing, okay? So that's going to be a big one. Sudden shifts in relationships are likely to show up uh, during this time period. This next two weeks is going to be like, um, I don't know, a wormhole. It's going to accelerate uh, a lot of change. So just hang on to your hat, okay? Good fortune. Good way to start. Growth. <laughs> I like that one too. And affluence. Wow. So this has to do with um, any kind of things that are unfair. Uh, Libra is very much about fairness, right? And so anything that's unfair is going to balance out. So if you have been, um, if you have felt like a, a financial uh, agreement has been unfair, uh, there's going to be an opportunity to shift that. Okay, so that could be your work situation or just something that you're paying that doesn't seem fair to you. Okay, um, it's not really necessarily about our version of fair. It's like a cosmic rebalancing, a karmic rebalancing. So you may think something's unfair, but is it? Okay, is it just is what's what's gnawing at you about this thing? It may well be. It may well be unfair, okay? Um, so let's just see where we go here with this. Definitely relationships, because Libra is the patron saint of relationships. It naturally rules the seventh house. Uh, some of you who are with me for this astrology uh, class I had, I taught the other night, a very beginner's class, which was uh, very important, I think, to kind of get your head around. If you're wanting to understand your karmic mission and path in this life, what you're here to do, your life purpose, I'm going to put a link to a class I have done several times uh, on the North Node and South Node in the description box. If you want to grab it, now's a good time because just before we get to this uh, karmic uh, wormhole, it might be good to know uh, what is on your karmic mission and path in this lifetime personally. And also, so you can kind of get a sense, because in that class, I talk about Libra and Aries as a pair, which is what's going to be activated this weekend. OK. Oh, God. All right. So <laughs> right out of the gate. Really? Scorpio season. The Scorpio season is coming up next week. Um, Empress, it's this is going to be a really powerful Scorpio season. So stay tuned for info on that. Empress. Six of Wands, the cards underneath are the ones that you may not see coming. Six of Wands, Nine of Pentacles, Four of Pentacles, Eight of Swords, and Page of Pentacles, Ace of Pentacles. I had a feeling. Lots of Pentacles. Oh, wow. King of Pentacles. We're taking that for sure. So there is, this is Libra. Okay. So this is Scorpio, Libra, and Taurus. At the end of this month, like I said, we have that full moon in Taurus. So Libra and Taurus showing up here. They are in this card both together because they're both ruled by Venus. And Libra and Taurus are both about relationships, especially uh, Libra is the patron saint of the seventh house, like I said. But Taurus is also about our self-worth and value. How do we feel? What do we feel we deserve? And that has that's a concept that is kind of connected with 
fairness, right? Like what do we feel we deserve? So this nine of pentacles and six of wands, if some of you are working on your own self-worth and value and maybe coming from a place of lack mentality or something, I think that could be really balanced here. It's a mindset that's holding you back. Like that's literally what these two cards say together. It's a mindset, right? That's holding you back. Both of these two cards are about self-restriction. And the new thing to learn is about taking advantage of new opportunities because they're going to grow into something really remarkable. Ta-da! Okay, so some of... <laughs> That is the end. No, it's not the end, but that, that's a good start, right? That's a good start. So these are the things that are showing up, even though we may not see them coming. In, in, the, in Scorpio time, I have a feeling that there's going to be a lot of this good fortune and affluence. Okay. And then this growth card is like the, the water and the fertilizer and the good earth and all of the things that are going to help it grow. So there is something about foundational awareness of our own alignment with, yes, I am worthy of good fortune and affluence. Yes, my work is something that helps people, something that brings um, people joy, something that brings people awareness or helps people ground or something like that. I, I do feel like things are unfair when one person is the only one to gain in a transaction. So if you buy something, you're giving money to another person, but if you get what you want, that is a fair exchange. And that's why we, when we look at something and we think, oh, the price is fair or unfair, like we kind of inherently know, um, if you really, really want it, really, really need it, then like price almost goes out the window. But if it's something that's more of a commodity, then it's like, this is the price and this is the what we pay. I have a feeling we're talking about something in the middle here, which can be some of you starting your spiritual businesses, businesses which I have talked about for a long time. We are going to be launching our tarot certification folks. You're gonna be able to get private readings from them soon. Stay tuned to this space. We are going to be launching this. I'm sick and tired of, of turning people away who and I'm telling them like, I can't do private readings right now. So we certified a whole bunch of people. Good. So watch this space. That is something that every single one of them is amazing in different ways, right? In different ways. So their job is to offer readings and, and that, and like that. I feel like, Okay, I'm just going to do this right now. <laughs> Don't get ahead of yourself, Mary Jo. The sun, the world, hanged man, nine of wands, page of cups. Wow. Okay, 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 okay. So if there has, there has definitely been in this time of retrograde, some very restrictive kind of energy some pulling back, some feeling like, why isn't this moving forward? Why isn't this going anywhere? I'm putting in the time and effort. I'm doing my thing, Pluto in Capricorn. Pluto just went direct in Capricorn yesterday. Okay. So it's been in retrograde for a while since June, I believe, hopefully June. I think that's right. And that's almost like a digging in of the heels energy. Now Pluto is going direct and the thing that's going to happen, it's like 27 degrees Capricorn. This last couple of degrees, it's going to take it the rest of the year and into next year to get into Aquarius. Um, and it won't even be permanently in Aquarius until like November of next year. But the tail end of Capricorn is like the people who are in power, who are doing it, that is out of balance, right? They're getting way more than the people, right? They're getting, um, someone is you know, it's, it's almost like a let them eat cake kind of a, a vibe where the riches and the wealth and the power and everything are so out of balance that it's an arrogant kind of energy. I feel like that's the thing that's being released in this last uh, four months, five months into next year and all the way into November of next year. I think you're going to see a lot of easing up, surrender. Surrender is the theme for this eclipse season. 
the alignment with the south node, past life karma, and that Libra new moon activating that. It's like, what's fair? What and like in a personal on a personal note, what's fair in relationship? I am definitely getting a twin flame vibe, not necessarily from this reading, but from my own work around the Libra new moon. I have a feeling that this chapter is going to be open for a lot of twin flames uh, at this time. And it is going to be about surrendering to that past life karma. Uh, I've definitely been getting a lot of messages around, hey, now is the time. Now is the time uh, for twin flames to come into union to move forward in their mission and purpose. There is a cosmic time clock that's going off, I feel, in this eclipse season. All right. So let's see where we're going. Four of Wands, Queen of Swords, Justice, and the Star. Aquarius. Okay. So, and this is Libra and this is Libra too. So we are definitely, um, oh my goodness, lovers, wheel of fortune, ace of eight of pentacles. There it is. There it is. Divine timing, lovers, twin flames, right? And this is the work, the work to do, the work to move forward in the, in this time and space. Whenever I say divine timing, I hear everybody groan. I groan. I get it. Like everybody wants like, tell me when it's going to happen. Scorpio time. This is, uh, this is Sagittarius. So Scorpio, Sag and into next year, into the Aquarian time period, this is all going to be unfolding. And I just feel like what's being activated right now is your sense of fairness, your sense of balance. All right. Your sense of if I'm putting in a lot of work, but I'm not getting any result, that's the pullback energy. And I did a little um, work recently. I can't remember which reading it was, but I was talking a lot about the divine feminine. I think it was last week. I was talking a lot about the divine feminine and how it's like it's almost like, you know, during a tsunami when the water pulls all the way back out before Right. And um, not suggesting a tsunami, but what I am saying, I am seeing a little bit of waves here, though. I am seeing a little bit of like um, things are churning up or things are moving again, not the choppiness. Right. The nine of wands can be choppy. The six of swords is really the choppy thing moving into into more peaceful water. But this nine of wands is sort of like the final the final sitch before we move forward and the final hurdle, the final thing we need to do. This seems pretty flimsy to me. If this is the final lesson of like, okay, everybody is just, you know, sort of restricting themselves, pulling back, maybe um, not reaching out, not talking, not doing it, just standing still like, okay, I don't want to do anything that's going to ruffle the universe's feathers. No, it is not possible anymore to do that. There's something about you just being here and being in your spiritual um, energy that is going like, okay, right? Like, okay, bring it. So I love this. This is really beautiful. Um, the page of cups down here is about like small beginnings. So this is going to get to be a wave, right? This is going to get to be a wave of good fortune, of affluence, of growth, of all of these things. It's going to get there. I mean, I love this Ace of Pentacles and King of Pentacles. That's really some beautiful stuff. This is a little known, uh, this is a little, uh, maybe an overlooked part of that reading here. My fault, totally. But like Page of Pentacles is about like, what's the new thing to learn? What's the new thing? And it can be about a sense of fair play. It can be about a sense of what's what's right is right or like us finally agreeing as a collective on a path forward or us finally uh, reaping the rewards of all of our work after kind of <clears throat> soldiering on, forgive the term, soldiering on through a lot of restrictive energy. And at the time, there's a real sense of divine feminine, right? Empress, um, allowing, attracting. At the same time, 
we've moved forward in our lives. And there's some things that maybe didn't, didn't really move or didn't really do anything because of that. I'm not calling divine feminine energy restrictive, but what I am saying is a different vibe. It's a different vibe than the masculine energy of moving forward. So I'm going to just count it. I'm just going to talk about it. Like, uh, I just want to leave you with this and we'll move into the extended. I will pull cards for each Zodiac sign in the extended. There's something here about healing and karmic release. And what did I write this morning? The path of surrender to surrender to one's life purpose in, in that it's balanced masculine and feminine. So if there's a, if there's a, a lack of the divine feminine, right? Allowing and welcoming and sort of nurturing. If there's a lack of that, then there's going to be need to be more of that. If there's, if there's a lack of masculine, which is like putting in the effort and time, there's going to need to be a balance of that. So these two energies coming into balance, I really like this. These two energies coming into balance. And that says to me that things can be both. Things can be uh, allowing and moving forward. Allowing and moving forward. That is the divine timing of now. So I am going to continue on with this reading. If this is your reading, there's a link below. Don't forget about the North Node class that I put in there. I feel like it's something that would be really good to know in the run up to this Libra uh, new moon when we're surrendering to our life mission and purpose. All right, so link is below. See over there, Pathfinders, we're just gonna keep on going. All right, I hope you enjoyed that video. If it was helpful to you, please consider liking this video and sharing it with anybody who might have a need for similar kind of information. And if you like this video, check out these videos.